Hi to y'all, Nurse Dude here. Hope you all had a very enjoyable weekend with a happy Easter and you're able to uh, spend it with friends and family. Well, today I have a video about my customed out Howa 1500 in 6.5 Creedmoor. Yes, I, I know, 6.5 Creedmoor back in 2015 when I originally got the rifle, well, the action that all I have left now of said rifle. It was not nearly ubiquitous and it's kind of turned into a meme. But anyways, it performs and I can get a good quarter MOA out of it consistently. So kind of talk about the rifle, um, how I started as far as, you know, getting into the long range and you kind of go from the base of the rifle, how it originally started, which unfortunately I don't have a picture of because it was just atrocious. And then kind of go from there, how I developed the different modifications and got to where it is now. So originally it had a Howa 1500 chassis, or excuse me, action, like I said, with the factory barrel on it. It was just a standard bull barrel at 24 inches. And then the factory Hoag stock, which was abysmal. And then the crummy no-name scope that was on it. So kind of going down the lines, I initially started... Uh, trying to shoot it with factory ammunition, found out that the scope was absolutely atrocious. So first thing I did was get a Burris XTR2. Uh, this is their horse reticle, which is the Christmas tree reticle. Um, I find it works very well for my brain, especially where we lived at the time, considering there was so much wind. So I would have to hold for crosswinds very frequently. Worked out perfectly. It's a fantastic scope. Uh, it's a little bit older one now. So I'm sure there's plenty of reviews you can find out there if you wanted to look a little bit more into it. Going down the line, shot it more. Then I wanted to upgrade the stock. Uh, I initially went with a um, Boyd's uh, laminate stock. Had a lot of fun sanding it down, painting it, customizing it. Uh, the biggest complaint on it was that it was non-adjustable. So at that time, I went to a KRG x-ray slash whiskey chassis thing uh, got it on sale as a parts bin and so i shot that for a really long time really enjoyed it having the adjustability and then i went on to the barrel so um, via a friend i was able to and this friend does not work there but just via a friend i was able to get a free krieger barrel certificate and so i decided to go with that uh, left the chambering in 6.5 Creedmoor, although after the ammo scare and all that crunch, I wish I would have gone with 6 Creedmoor because I could find 6 Creedmoor everywhere. I could not find any 6.5 or any of the supplies. Besides the point, uh, maintain the 24-inch barrel on it. Uh, the rifling is your standard rifling. I did not go with 5R. The profile, I can't remember. It is way too heavy, though. I probably should have gone with at least one or two lighter contours, but I did get it fluted, and I find the fluting does help with the heat dispersion pretty well. And on the muzzle end, I have a Griffin Armament Paladin brake, so that way I can use a blast shield and then maybe a suppressor down the line. Uh, the uh, blast shield works really well in the dust and dirt, and that's mainly why I got it. Was able to develop hand loads for it and the load that i finally settled on that works really well in this barrel oh i also got it blueprinted and seracoded for the action the action is just still completely stock i've never felt the need to upgrade it it works perfect and the blueprinting on it worked out really well with the barrel so the load that i have i use 140 grain burger hybrid targets and behind it i use 40.8 grains of h4350 Hornady brass, mostly because it is the most consistent brass I can find, and I trimmed that to 1.92 overall. Uh, the loaded overall length is 2.85 plus or minus 2.63 is kind of my max that I'm able to stick in the magazines. And then I use a BR2 primer when I can. Um, otherwise, large rifle primers work just as well. From my understanding, the, there's no real difference between the bench rests and the standard primers other than who makes them and they kind of have the machine dialed in a little bit better. I, don't, I haven't really noticed that much of a difference, to be honest. And the overall velocity of it is about 2,700 feet per second, give or take. 
Uh, I can get consistently a third to a quarter MOA out of it, as we can see here with my lovely keyholing. So, or excuse me, clover reliefing, not keyholing. If it was keyholing, that'd be really bad. Um, but I, I find that I shoot it easily a half MOA consistently, and that might be me, whereas the rifle is way more accurate than, than I'll ever be. So I got the loads going, really enjoyed it. Um, then I found out that my next, uh, I guess you could say, failure point was the flex of the forend of the uh, KRG chassis was interfering with my barrel. So I decided to swap over to a MDT, and they had a ACC uh, sale at the time, and I really liked the folding stock and the super adjustability with it. Um, granted, they were a little bit of a pain to work with as far as getting what I wanted from MDT, but that's kind of just, just besides the point in, in the past now. So that's how I kind of developed on it, and I really enjoy shooting it. Uh, the other little quality of life things that I've done is I've upgraded to a spur mount for my rings. Phenomenal. I highly recommend them to anyone who wants a more heavy duty, I'm going to call it professional style scope rings. They're, they're phenomenal. And the built-in bubble level is really nice. Um, I went with a steel uh, scope base. Uh, I think the reason overall my logic was that it is less temperature sensitive than aluminum. And so even though that I have an aluminum, I thought that having steel steel aluminum versus steel aluminum aluminum was better in the cold at the time kind of a moot point now considering there's no snow anywhere where i live but that's what i went with uh the trigger on it is a single stage rifle basics again i don't like two stages and the single stage on here works out phenomenal uh magbowl bipod that i got in trade and that's about it over oh uh, the bolt handle this is a knob made by a south african company it's really cool. It has a little cup that you slide in and then you thread the barrel over it. So it kind of pinches the bolt knob. Um, finding accessories for Hawa's is a little bit difficult, especially back in like 2015 when I bought it all. And so I couldn't find a company at the time who, went, who was willing to re-thread and set up for the bolt knob. So I just got an aftermarket pinch one. And actually, it turned out really well. I like it a lot. So there's the pike, as I like to call it. It's a big old huge long piece, but it does its job very well. I can consistently get one first round hits about at 750. Outside of that, I think it's just lack of practice, to be honest. Um, it takes a long time to set up for a thousand yards, and I don't quite have big enough targets, if that makes sense, to be an MOA or smaller. So I just kind of decided to, uh, that was kind of my max at the time. Uh, I'd like to be able to get out to it a mile eventually once fire season ends because we're coming up on close on that. And I don't want to be that guy that starts a fire. So probably in the winter, I'll try to get out a little bit further and see how that goes. Um, overall, I mean, I enjoy it. It's kind of down into that level of, you know, mad scientist when it comes to the rounds. Uh, I think I'll probably end up talking about some of the accessories that I came up for it over the years as far as the little quality of life things that I did, um, including my really cool little holdover calculator I have here. Um, turn it over really quick so we can see it. It has my standard heights for the different targets, the corresponding range once I mill them, and then the adjustments that I'll be able to need to do. And then on the inside, once I flip it over, I have my distance, I have, excuse me, I have my wind holds. Uh, I kind of came up with this one afternoon and uh, laminated the sheets and printed it out. And I used uh, project binder folders, you know, the ones you would turn in essays in, uh, in, a, in a middle school and high school uh, with that to be able to kind of make this. And I kind of get like, a, oh, that's kind of cool every time I go out and use it. So uh, kind of like these little, you know, cool, tactical mini mods that I end up finding out and doing. So uh, there's the overview of the rifle and I will talk to you guys later.